Hi right, guys, welcome back. So today, this is unfortunately a video that I hoped would never have to be made. Unfortunately, we're comparing the JSB Exact PB3s against the h and FTT Greens that you've seen on the channel now. We are imminently facing a lead ban and it is going to affect everything that we know and everything that we've learned about small calibre. Pistol shooting, target shooting, pest control, the lot, and even some of the rimfire stuff is also going to be affected by this. So hopefully we can learn something from these today. Going forward, of course... If there is some viable alternatives that are lead free, well, let's try them out. Let's see how they go. Let's be open minded about this. But at the moment, everything that we've tried certainly hasn't been sort of considered safe enough. Certainly, I wouldn't consider it safe enough for humane pest control. Target shooting becomes basically a lottery and everything that goes with that barrel wear and things. So we're going to test these open minded, just going to take them straight out. We use the XTI, so high end target rifle, single shot rifle in 177. The JSB PB freezes weigh 6.79 grains, so they're one of the heavier lead free versions. And then the FTT greens are 5.71 grains, so they're a whole grain lighter nearly. These look almost exactly the same as a modern JSB heavy, and of course, these are the FTT shape. So, got a beautiful day for testing today. There's barely a breath of wind. We're going to start at 25 yards, just see if we can get something of a group from these. If they are safe enough, if they're not scattering too much, and I think that we can push them out to 45, we will. So at the end, I'm sure we're going to have an awful lot to talk about once we've got some results, and then we can look into the politics of this a little bit. So I'm going to go get everything set up, and I'll see you at the farm. Right, guys, we're here. So we're at 25 yards. We're out in the semi-open. There's a bit of a breeze. It's coming straight towards us, maybe five to six miles an hour. We are back here. Got the XTI all set up. We're going to shoot it off the bean bag today, and I'll probably just have the gloved hand under the butt hook. So I'm going to run some groups out. I'll make a call if they're any good or not. Then potentially we'll run them out to 45 yards if we get anything decent. However, they might get a bit dodgy at that sort of range. So we'll make a call whether we do push them out further or not. So let's get this all set up and we'll get cracked on. Right, so I'm just going to be supporting the back of the rifle with the gloved hand. Now the barrel itself hasn't been cleaned since we last shot them slugs. So the barrel has still got something of a lead lining in there. We'll probably find that the first few, if these are anything like the previous lead free ones, the first few shots might be all right, and then they might well open up or they might well surprise us and actually be decent. So 10 mag, back this off to 25 yards. Let's see how it goes. I'll see if I can bring on to something of a zero. we will start in the center of the card. Ooh. That's a funny old noise. A little bit of resonance on fire in that one. It went in a little bit high. Loads quite smoothly. It's red hot out here now today. Oh, that's not a bad start. There's probably a pellet's width gap between those two. Oh, that one feels a little bit raunchy going in. That's not a bad start then. Last two are touching, but don't forget the barrel still has some lead in its bore. Just made a quick scope adjustment. We'll see if we can bring that down to something of a zero. And enough, get down there quick. Right, we're pretty much bang on the bullet at the moment. We'll give it a few more shots just there to make sure it's not wandering around still. And then we'll go into the little circles around the outside edges of the card. Well, first impressions, actually not too bad. Right, well I've shot the middle of that target out mostly now, so I'm gonna move on to the little circles around the outside. The h and FTT greens, they actually ran through the Anschutz quite nicely, I mean they, are an expensive pellet of course they are lead free but they performed as well as an average mid-range pellet they were certainly nowhere near that of a match pellet but they weren't too shabby considering all right we'll go up to the top left well that's not too bad Let's see if i can put another one in that same hole Let's see if i can put two in each of them little tiny red circles Oh, I moved a little bit to the left. I could probably actually do with giving this another click on the scope, but I'm not going to now. We'll leave it where it is. 
Now these are very hard to find in the UK and not readily available. I don't know why. I think this is probably the seventh or eighth time I've used the XTI now. I'll tell you what, it's really slickened up. The cocking's got a bit smoother. The firing cycle, I have backed off the stabiliser a half a turn. And we shot it before, a little while ago, with the last video we shot it with the slugs and it dealt with that additional weight of the slugs as well, very well. I'm quite surprised because when I shot the Anschutz next to it, the Anschutz doesn't deal with them heavier pellets or slugs particularly well. Oh, a couple more. I mean, the downside to shooting these lead-free ones is that you need to take out a mortgage to buy a couple of tins. But I suppose the reality of that is, is you probably only need lead-free ones in your pocket when you get caught by the old bill. Honestly, officer, I was using lead free. These are all right. I don't know what they're going to be. We're, I think we're definitely going to run these around to 45 in a minute. I think it'd be rude not to. At this range, with a little breeze running towards us, I haven't got my windicator stick out, but it's just a gentle breeze. Oh, that one come up a little bit higher. That was actually. Right, well that's annoying. That was a bit of an abrupt end. The phone actually stopped recording. It got too hot. So it's 30 odd degrees. It's in direct sunlight, of course. Brand new Pixel XL phone will record for five minutes and then just randomly stop. What a piss take. Anyhow, look, they're all stacked right next to each other. This is where we started, walked them down. You can see there's a slight bit more scattered to them, brought them together. One, two, three, four. You know what, that's not that bad at all. We definitely need to run them out to 45. We'll have a wind coming across from probably about three o'clock then, so we'll get a bit of drift from the right to the left. I'm gonna go and grab another card and run it out to 45, let the phone call down, and we'll see how they run, shall we? Right, we're down at 45. I thought it might be wise to tuck the GoPro in the shade slightly. So here's the target on top of the anvil. Now, them little red circles, the outside diameter of the ones I've drawn on are seven millimeters. We'll see if we can get some groups. We're just gonna monitor the drifts and drops first to see if we can establish an aim point, And then we'll see if we can have a go at the old biathlon target, shall we? Right, that's the best I could do with what I've got. So I've just propped the little chair up behind the phone in the tripod to hopefully keep it in the shade. I've tucked the other phone in the shade behind the bean bag and then the target and the GoPro's also out. Right, so I've just got to spin us around. Bring the magnification up. Right, we're down the end there at 45. Come on, let's see if we can do that. Right, edge of target. We're going to be back here. Just got to spin around a few degrees. I'll make sure I get the old windicator stick out this time. There's only a gentle breeze running, so we'll see how it goes. Right, finally, we've spun round. Everything's in the shade now. Windicator sticks out. Still on 10 mag. Just going to adjust the focus. See where that gets us. Pretty good. Right, so I'm not going to aim off. All I'm going to do at the moment is just use the aim point on the card with my 25 yard zero so we can monitor the drifts and the drops. And then hopefully that will give us something of a, a group down there. Of course, it won't be on the dots. Maybe once I've established where it is, I'll try and pick a couple off and then we'll also have a go on the old biathlon target as well. So, for the moment, I'm just aiming for the very centre of the card. Wow. That one pulled way over to the left. On the same elevation line, we've got over a mil dot of drift between the first and the second one. And there was really only a very gentle gust. Keep your eye on the little windicator stick there. You'll see that the breeze is really gentle. That one split the difference. There's barely the most conceivable bit of breeze at the minute. Yet yeah, they're getting quite a bit of drift on. So that's the catch then. They're pretty accurate. They might be all right indoors. But even with the tiniest breeze, they're all over the place. Where did that one go? That must have gone through the same hole as one of the others. Right, so we're averaging about a mil dot of drift and there's barely the most sort of discernible bit of wind. That's mental. Right, shall we see if we can actually try and take that centre of that target out and take the red dot in the middle of the card out. Let's have a little go, shall we?
No. Gave it a mil dot of wind and it only took half of it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Absolute ridiculous. Really, really minor changes in the wind speed and direction causing reasonable variations in the point of impact for sure. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm fairly good at shooting in the wind. I've got a fairly good feel for it. I spend all my time shooting in the wind, but that is ridiculous. Oh, through the same hole as the last one. Wow. I mean, that's a tiny little circle in the middle of there that we're actually trying to hit. The windicator's barely moving, there's barely a breath of wind running, and that's just dodgy, really. I mean, we're still on the card, it's not that much, but I imagine if we had an actual decent bit of wind, you'd probably be lucky to hit the card. I mean, we've just seen that 25 yards are absolutely perfect, really. But the minute you get a bit of breeze on, that's a bit dodgy. We're going to set up the old um, biathlon target for a laugh. I mean, there's no point even trying to go for the reducer. I mean, I will have a go, but I think chances of hitting that are slim to none. So, so far, short range, no wind, great. 45 yards with the most gentle of breeze. You can see they're all on the same elevation line as well. So that's purely wind just picking up and moving them very easily. So, yeah, great start. Not so great at the moment. Let's get that biathlon target on. Right, swapped over to the biathlon target. Everything's tucked back in the shade again. It's interesting because these conditions actually are really some of the worst actually for your scopes and the rifles themselves. When you get a reasonable temperature shift like this, this is when things all start to move. The FT crowd, they're very well known for keeping a good eye on the actual scope itself, can shift through reasonable temperature change. And of course, big old lump of metal, you can feel it's getting quite a bit warmer now. So there's a good chance that the actual scope itself will shift, although I don't think to affect us at this sort of range at the moment it certainly will do if it gets much hotter though but trying to juggle this wind there's barely a conceivable breath of wind here and we've got quite a scattering on these um lead free heavies right let's see if we can get the biathlon target shall we and it just nicked in on the left hand side so for knockdown targets like this well in low wind probably not too bad but the reality of that is is this would definitely not be humane for pest control with even the slight misjudging of the breeze that's barely even conceivable to feel on my face that could end up with an injured animal oh, i felt that wind pick up a tiny bit more nice right, two for two all right we'll go for the third and the fourth and then we'll have a few shots on the center 12 miller Oh, see the wind done me then. You can see these in flight very well because they're um, shiny silver. You can see them all the way out to the target very well. I got it that time, middled it as well. I mean, they're 26 mil, so then <laughs> not exactly a small target, but. Oh, I just nicked that one in on the right hand side. So the wind had obviously died off a little tiny bit then. It might have not actually. They don't actually have enough energy to re um, set the paddles or to actually knock the paddles down. Right, let's go for the 12 mil. First go, right. Well, to be fair, that was probably more luck than judgment in this breeze. I've got a 6mm up the top, I hope the GoPro can see the 6 miller up there, but I think that's just um, I think that's just going to be more luck than judgement to be fair. I do like a challenge. I feel that wind on my arm. Wow, that one went completely straight. Well, okay for knockdowns, these will be absolutely no good for any sort of pest control. I haven't even got the energy to knock them paddles down out there. It was only the last one that actually went over and that's the easiest to knock down of the lot. So all right for short range, indoor work maybe, 45 yards in just the gentlest of breezes. Nope, 
no good at all. Definitely don't even consider these for pest control. Unless you're maybe in a barn at 20 yards, maybe you'd be all right, but anything other than that, dodgy as. Right then, the wind has picked up marginally down that end. We're still fairly sheltered here, so we've got the FTT greens. We're back at 25 yards, the same as we've just done with the old lead-free heavy JSBs. Let's give them a little go, shall we? So of course we started the JSB heavies, or the lead-free ones, with a leaded barrel. Now obviously we've run a number of those through it, so we should be starting these off with a fairly scrubbed out barrel just after shooting lead-free. So I don't know whether it will come straight on or not. Interesting to find out. Now I've shot these through the Anschutz already. They were uh, not too bad for the average lead-free, but certainly nowhere near what a lead pellet would do. So I'm just gonna aim straight at the center of this card. We'll get a few off and see whether we're anywhere near the zero from the JSBs. First one's a little bit left. That's all right. Can't afford to drop these ones in the sand. Although the h and come in tins of 300, the JSBs are 200. Right, the last two of those have gone through the same hole. Right, nice, three of them. Right, let's move on to the little circles running outside. So, as before, the outside diameter of them circles, the very outside edge of the line, is seven millimetres. I actually aimed that to the bottom left of it. I lined my reticle up with the little crosses on the card because I didn't zero it fully. So I'm just going to aim for exactly the same spot again. <laughs> okay, and that one went up through the circle. Um, I was actually aiming off then. That was a, uh, well, that looks like I've hit where I was aiming. It hasn't hit where I was aiming. I don't mind claiming it, but <laughs> let's go again. The groups are obviously still moving around a tiny bit, but each one follows the next one in the same hole, so not bad. Don't forget, I'm not particularly well zeroed at the moment. They are coming in just above where I'm aiming, but I'm aiming for the centre of the red circle, so it should come in slightly above it. But not that high. That's a weird one. Okay, so they're not quite as tight as the JSBs, but they're still not too bad. Right, bottom right circle then. Then we'll run these out to 45 and see what they drift like. Well, not quite as tight as the JSBs, but I tell you what, they're really not that bad. Still very little in the way of a breeze running. It is coming straight towards us. So yeah, maybe the JSBs are a little bit tighter. I mean, again, it's always going to be a barrel dependency thing. Some barrels will probably be more accurate with them than others. I'm going to go around to 45. We'll just get the card out. I don't think there's much point in trying the knockdowns. So we'll get the card out and we'll be able to then compare the drifts and the drops between the two. That'll be the most important thing. So I'll get that all set up now. Maybe a bit, oh no. What did I say about, can't afford to spill them. I think we're all right. Let's see how these run. So although I've just taken out that lower left circle, I'm actually aiming at the very centre of the card. We've got a tiny bit more drop, maybe only a couple of mil. No, in fact, probably about the same drop actually as the JSB is looking at it. Right, the two of those have gone through the same hole. But again, more luck than judgment, really. Just the wind has taken them the same. Right, let's see if I can take the centre of that card out. So we've got basically the same amount of drop as the JSBs. And completely impossible to read the wind at such low levels. Wow, I'm well aimed off. That's almost where I'm aiming, that's just shy of two mil dots to the left, that one's gone. Uh, 
they're basically impossible to um, shoot accurately. I certainly can't read the wind at such small amounts, so you can't really see the windicators doing anything. There's really no sort of defining features in here. The grass isn't doing a lot, it's very short and it's all on the sand anyway. Yeah, so marginally worse than the JSBs at 25, only marginally, but quite a lot worse at range, unfortunately, which is a shame. The Anschutz group's probably about the same at 25 as this, and I can't imagine that it would group any better. It's just purely that lack of mass of a pellet, a bit of instability maybe because it's made out of tin or zinc or whatever it is. I don't tell you what they're made out of, by the way. Um, just charge you more. Yeah, well, I'm done, I'm getting hot. We'll have a look at these at home this evening. Quite interesting overall, but maybe short range indoor work. Yeah, maybe they're all right, but you want to use these for pest control. Unless you're shooting in a barn somewhere completely enclosed. I don't think so, probably too dodgy. Right, I'll see you at home. Right, we're back. So we're going to take these results purely on their face value and how they shot. The JSB's marginally edged the H&N through the XTI barrel. Now, of course, there's always going to be some barrel dependency. Some barrels will potentially shoot them better. Some will shoot them worse. On the day, the JSB's won by a small amount. Now, you can see here the outside diameter of these red circles is 7mm. These were pretty easy to keep in that little square. Now, these squares are 11 millimeters. It was easy enough. There was barely a breath of wind. That is... To be honest, a decent lead pellet would be much tighter. You'd want them on top of each other, but that's still acceptable on the face of it for pest control at that range. The h and again, still at that shorter range, a little bit more scattered, but potentially if these were a lead pellet, you'd have no qualms about using those for pest control at this range in low wind. Now, we've already tested on the channel how lethal these things are when it comes to ricochets. Now, both of these are a very solid pellet. They don't sort of deform on impact in the pellet catcher. In the back of the pellet catcher, they were just stuck in there. I mean, they weren't reusable, but they certainly showed very little signs of deformation. Ultimately, that isn't gonna be particularly safe. Now, on softer targets, rats and things like that, there's a good chance that these are gonna go clean through them and start coming back towards you. So certainly nowhere nearly as safe as a lead pellet in that respect. Now, I'm gonna show you the cards for 45 yards. Right, so here we go then. So the JSBs, you saw from the footage that I was working around, even in that barely negligible breeze. I mean, I could only feel just the lightest of twitches in the wind on the arm hairs, you know, on my face, really subtle movement in the wind, and we was getting a reasonable bit of drift, quite hard to control at that range. Now, of course, they are much lighter than a lead equivalent, so of course there is going to be that bit more drift. Now, the h and interestingly, have torn the card up an awful lot more at 45 yards. Now, it looks as if they've become quite unstable by that range. So maybe okay for the very shorter range. The JSB through the XTI barrel certainly look like they are a little bit more stable at the longer ranges. Neither of these are holding enough energy. They're not retaining enough energy for humane pest control at that sort of range. And unless you're absolutely perfect at reading the wind and very minor changes. Now, I'm pretty good in the wind. I shoot all the time in the wind, but it was almost impossible to keep these on a target at that sort of range. They're not retaining the energy for safe pest control. We've even got ricochet risks at that sort of range on metal targets, so HFT type targets. They won't necessarily come straight back at you, but you've got obviously competitors all around you in other lanes, so they may go in, into a target this way and off this way. So it's going to mean that pretty much all of the target shooting as we know it and pest control is going to be affected by this going forward. Now, hopefully, the teams at JSB and h &N are working on some better replacements. I do definitely hope that they've got a bit more R&D going on in the background. I mean, there is a few legitimate reasons why you may want to use lead-free pellets. Now, only twice in my shooting career, if you like, have I ever had to use PB-free pellets. Now, both of those were pest control situations. One of those was in a food factory, so of course they don't want lead. That's understandable for that limited reason. The other one was another pest control situation and the stuff that we were actually shooting was then going to be fed to, in fact, it was birds of prey. There was a guy who had birds of prey. He didn't want lead in his birds of prey. He specifically asked us to shoot lead free. We shot it lead free. In very unusual circumstances, is lead free acceptable? If the government wants to tell me and criminalise me for shooting lead pellets into a backstop where I'm catching them, I'm recycling them, well, I certainly know what I'm going to do. Didn't really want to get into all of this sort of stuff. It's not really what the channel's about. But going forward, if this is the best we can get, and to be fair, H&N and JSB are trying. They're learning. 
the world has changed in the last few years. Now, there was a five-year voluntary or a period where they wanted to transition from lead to lead-free. We've lost at least three years of that through COVID. The world is now a different place. Everything that's going on in Eastern Europe at the moment is affecting supply chains. The cost of the materials is getting ridiculous. You're going to need 10 years at least to find a decent alternative to lead, if there even is one. Just down to the materials that these are made from and the densities of them, it's going to mean significant changes to barrels, potentially the way that rifles load, magazines, everything is going to have to change to run safely with lead-free pellets. Now, not really a great end to the video, unfortunately. Yes, the JSBs won marginally. The HNNs weren't too bad. If you have a really unusual circumstance, like I've already mentioned before, some unusual pest control situations, then I'd certainly give the JSBs a consideration, but probably best avoided in most cases. Now, interestingly, since I did the filming for this, I've also then tried to shoot some more of the slugs back through it that I shot in the previous video, taking an awful lot to bring them back on after shooting the JSBs through the XTI barrel. So need to have a little look at that make sure that there's been no damage done i can't imagine there is it probably just needs a really good scrub out before i then go back onto the lead pellets and slugs so i'll keep you updated on that as well but yeah jsb's one h and a close second all of them not great so that'll do it for this one guys before i get too ranty i'll catch you in the next one